Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhad. In this session, we would look at foreign tax credit part two. Part two means I already covered part one. Please look in part one in the description. Specifically, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna work an example that deals with the excess foreign excess foreign tax credit, as well as the FTC baskets, which is the foreign tax credit baskets. This topic is covered in international accounting or taxation. It's also covered on the CPA exam and the ACCA exam. As always, if you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. YouTube is what I house my 1000 plus 1500 plus accounting, auditing, tax and finance. And Here's a list of all the courses that I cover. On my website, you can find additional inf additional information, such as the PowerPoint slides, multiple choice practice questions, as well as 2,000 CPA questions. Please check out my website. StudyPal.co is an artificial intelligence driven study platform that matches you with someone who's studying for the CPA, CFA, or any other certification. They, are, they have users in 85 countries and 2,500 cities. The prerequisite for this session is the foreign tax credits part one. The link will be in the description. If you cannot find the link, please email me. So the access foreign tax credit, and this is basically, this is where we end up the prior session. Basically any access foreign tax credit may, might be used to offset additional taxes paid to the United States on the foreign source income in the years in which the foreign tax rate are lower than the US tax rate. So what happened if you have any access foreign tax credit, you can take that tax credit, carry it back one year because you paid more overseas. This is where we have access. So you can go back one year and apply for a refund, basically. And this the refund has to be due to paying taxes on foreign source income in that prior year. So you cannot apply for US income. It has to be foreign source income. Or if you, if you don't have, if you can go back to the prior year, you can carry it forward 10 years. So you can go back one, carry it forward 10. And the next 10 years, again, you have to know where to use it. You can only use it on foreign source income. You can only use it against foreign source income. So you cannot use it on any other source income. Okay. So basically, in effect, the excess foreign tax credit can be used only in the previous year or in the next five years, your average foreign tax rate paid is less than the US. It means you did not pay enough. Now you have the chance to offset your, uh, to use the, that foreign tax credit. And the best way to illustrate this is always to work an example. And here's an example. Assume Z company foreign branch in country Z has $50,000 pre-tax income in year one, 70,000 in year two, 100,000 in year three. So they have three years of taxable income. Assume the effective rate uh, uh, effective income tax rate in country Z in year one was 20%. And obviously 20% is less than 21. What does it mean less than 21? It means the US tax rate is 21. In year two, country Z increased their corporate income tax rate to 23. It becomes more than the US corporate tax rate, more than 21. Okay. So the US tax rate in each year is 21%. So again, I told you this, we're comparing this to US, US tax rate. And this is what the company would look like. Let's see what happened under those circumstances. So here's what we have. Year one, we have foreign source income of 50,000. In the host country, we paid 20%. In the US, we should have paid 10,500. Well, the foreign tax credit allowed in the US only 10,000. They're only going to give you credit for 10,000. What does that mean? It means you are responsible for paying $500. So year one, year one, you have to write a check to Uncle Sam for an, for an additional $500 because you already paid 10,000 in country Z. Let's move on to year two. Okay, year two, your income is 70,000. Now in year two, remember, the hosting country increased the rate to 23%. Now you paid 16,100. If you paid taxes in the US, you would have only paid 14,700. Well, which, which credit are you allowed? You are allowed a credit of 14,700. Why? Because they would only assume you earn that money in the US and you'll have to pay 21%. What does that mean? It means you paid 16,100 uh, they gave you a credit for 14,700. So you have a remaining credit of 1,000, whoops, remaining excess credit 
of 1,400. Now, what can you do with this credit? Well, what can you do? You can go back to the prior year and file an amendment. I don't know the form for the for that type of amendment, but you have to file a form with the U.S. government and claim you can get back the $500. So simply put, you have $1,400. You're going to file a claim and use up $500 to get your $500 that you paid last year. And you will have remaining, you will have after you file the return and get your money, assuming no issues, you have an excess foreign tax credit of $900. Okay, let's look at year three. Year three, you have a foreign uh, foreign source income of 100,000. You paid 23%, which is you paid 23,000 to the hosting country. Your, your tax in the US is only 21, and they're only gonna give you credit for 21%. Although you pay 23, I'm sorry, we're not gonna give you credit for more than for more than 21,000. 21, you don't have to pay any taxes in the US, and now you have $2,000 in in uh, an excess an excess uh, an excess foreign tax credit, foreign tax credit. Okay. Now remember, you have 900 from year two, and now you have 2000 from year three. What are you going to do with this? Well, you're going to carry those forward, offsetting any foreign tax, uh, offsetting any taxes on foreign source income in case you, uh, in case your tax rate in that hosting country was lower than 21. So as long as the, simply put, as long as the host country, their tax rate is more than 21, there's nothing you can do with that tax credit. You only can use it if the hosting country tax rate is less than 21, then you could use those ex excess tax, excess foreign tax credit to offset your income. Okay. So this is basically what I just said, you know, what the rules are. So this is what would happen to that money. Now let's talk about something called foreign tax credit baskets. Because remember, when you operate overseas, you could be operating as a branch. The branch could have different type of income. They could have passive income. They could have active income. Passive income means uh, stocks, bonds, income that you're not actively working for. So if you have different businesses, you could have a subsidiary versus a branch. So how does it work? How does it work? So it's a good idea to have a historical overview just to kind of show you how it works. All the way up to up to 1986, simply put, up to 1986, up to 1986, all foreign source income was combined to determine a single foreign tax credit limitation. So simply put, and a single amount for foreign tax credit allowed. So really, they did not care the type of the business you have. All that income, all that, all the taxes and all the businesses that you have overseas, you bunched them all into one computation and you computed your foreign tax limitation remember your limitation is what you paid or what you should have what you should have paid in the u.s and we'll work an example then in 2004 the jobs act, the jobs act the american jobs creation act which is known by the jobs require foreign taxable income to be classified into two categories or into two baskets so now you have to differentiate your foreign source income into two basket one is a general income basket basically your active income and the other one is the passive income basket with the FTC computed separately for each basket. So now what's going to happen is you cannot combine everything. It's good to combine everything because if you combine everything, your limitation will go up. So you have a higher limitation. So you have a higher tax credit. Okay. Now this is again, this is, this is no longer valid anymore. This is no longer valid anymore. Here comes the tax cuts and jobs act of 2017. And here's what happened. Now we have one, two, three different baskets so now as a result of this change of the tax cuts and jobs act what's going to happen an additional foreign tax basket for foreign branch income is created here's what's going to happen as a result of this change controlled foreign corporation subpart f income must be allocated if that income is coming to either a general income basket so we have this is the you write this down this is the general income and this is controlled foreign corporation or passive income so now what's going to happen the controlled foreign corporation okay sub sub chapter f income they'll have to 
break the income down between general income and passive income then we have foreign branch and this is the foreign branch what does that mean it means we have to keep we have to compute for each basket separately and when we net them we cannot net one one basket against the other so companies are not allowed to net foreign tax credit across basket so you might have you might have access here you might have access here access foreign income tax credit but you cannot use this access to offset the passive income from the controlled foreign corporation nor offset the branch and same thing applied to passive if you have any access foreign tax credit you cannot utilize it somewhere else okay in other words the access foreign tax credit from one basket cannot be used to reduce the additional taxes owed to another basket so what can you do if you have additional foreign tax credit just that access will 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 stay with you and it will offset general income in the future either go or, or going back one year so simply put that access access tax credit can only be used against the general income the access tax credit here can only be used against the passive income and the access foreign tax credit and the foreign branch it has to be used there again the best way to illustrate this is to actually look at an example so let's assume we have alpha company has a branch in country a and they have a branch in country z so it's the same company branches in two different countries this is their taxes in country a i'm sorry income uh, income before taxes this is how much taxes they paid this is their income before taxes in country in in um, alpha alpha company in brand in z country and this is their the taxes paid now let's assume okay this is alpha company let's assume that the branch in country a makes passive investment in stocks and bonds so that's that's their income and the branch in country z is a manufacturing operation basically active income so you have active income in one branch in one country passive income in another branch in another country it does not matter they're both branches so if it's a branch under the current u.s tax rule the income from both branches would be placed in the foreign branch income therefore they can offset each other what's going to happen the total income of two hundred thousand so therefore the total branch income is two hundred thousand the foreign tax limitation and the foreign tax allowed is thirty four thousand why thirty four thousand because we're going to combine them we can combine those two because they pay thirty four thousand we can combine them if you could not combine them it's not as advantageous now you still have on the in the u.s net u.s tax liability on the branch income will be eight thousand. You, you did not pay enough you did not pay enough and let me show you why you did not pay enough because together two hundred thousand in the u.s you should have had paid 21 percent, which is forty two thousand you only are allowed is thirty four thousand so this is what you actually paid actually paid versus how much you should have paid you compare those two and you only can take a credit for thirty four thousand but your u.s liability that was only eight thousand you were able to combine them which is good if you could not combine them we're going to see in a moment we're going to change the scenario and if you cannot combine them it's not as advantageous it's not as advantageous so let's take a look at the same scenario again alpha company branch in a country and alpha company branch in z now assume that the entity in country a okay uh, is incorporated as a subsidiary and that subsidiary will earn passive income and the tax rate is less than 90 percent of u.s corporate tax rate which is a it's less they're paying less which is technically a tax haven the the uh, the operation in country b is a branch the operation in country b is a branch so this is um this is a branch and this is a sub okay this is a branch and this is a sub okay now the subsidiary in country a remember the a generated passive income which must be allocated to the passive income basket so this income is passive income basket okay why because it's a subsidiary and it's passive income if it was a branch it would not be a big deal we'll be able to combine them okay so alpha company will have an additional taxes so those two cannot be combined now they cannot be combined so alpha company will have an additional ten thousand dollar because again in the us it's one hundred thousand times twenty one percent they're responsible for twenty one thousand they only paid eleven thousand they cannot use the access from from the other uh, from the other business from the branch 
okay so they, they are responsible for 2000 so country z branch country z this is not country b country z country z branch is placed in a separate foreign income foreign tax foreign tax credit basket and alpha company has an excess of 2000 so this company the uh, the uh, country z branch country z branch they only have to pay 21000 and they pay 23 they have an excess of 2000 well this excess of 2000 cannot help the subsidiary in country a although they're both the same company but they have to be they have to stay basically they have to stay separated they have to stay separated okay alpha is not allowed to use the excess foreign tax credit of two thousand dollar from the foreign branch basket to offset to offset the additional tax of ten thousand dollars so it's basically this is the point here is you cannot so basically we're back to here back to the baskets what happened under this scenario we have we have uh, the subsidiary so the subsidiary has passive income we have a sub with passive income and they were short they had to pay they had to pay an additional 11 10,000 they had to pay an additional $10,000 now the branch they had access of 2000 we cannot net them we cannot net them in contrast to this example in this example there were both branches and we net them out i hope you i hope with the numbers it make a little bit more sense a little bit more sense to you okay it's same thing so i guess i have the slide twice that's fine in the next session i will take a look at u.s tax treatment of foreign operation income and basically in the next session uh, you're gonna you need to know everything that we learned up to this point because we're gonna look at a comprehensive example of how the u.s uh, treat foreign source income we're going to look at different uh, sources and we're going to try to see what's combinable what's not what can we combine what can we not combine so on and so forth as always i would like to remind you to visit my website uh, for additional resources if you like this video please like it share it put it in a playlist um, if it's benefiting you it means it, it will benefit other people thank you very much study hard and good luck